The Los Angeles Coliseum Super Bowl of Motocross, the granddaddy of them all, and the largest and most prestigious Supercross in the world. The world-famous peristyle of the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. You've seen it all over the world on television from the 1984 Olympics. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Huffman, and welcome to the 16th Annual Super Bowl of Motocross here at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Different type of start tonight. Uh, there's no downhill start because the AMA said no at the last minute, so it's a very short start, David. It is going to be a bottleneck. The riders are trying to figure out how to take this start. I don't know what's going to happen. It is going to be possibly the strangest start of all time. <laughs> it's a first gear. They can't get out of first gear before they're in the first turn. Correct. And uh, there's another portion of the track where it is single file through. And like Rick Johnson was essentially complaining to the head referee, hey, you can either get in front and block people. You can bump people. Another rider, a team rider, can actually possibly hold him back. If he doesn't get a good start, he doesn't like it. Is heat number four, and that's the hottest rider in the world today in motocross, according to Bob Hanna, Ricky Johnson. And Johnson, David Stanfield, has drawn a tough heat in his heat number four. The toughest heat of the night, a loaded gun. Jeff Ward concentrating on getting to the first turn first. There's number nine, Ron Lachine, Ricky Johnson's nemesis. But remember, we got Ricky Ryan in this. Anybody that's won a Supercross this year is in this heat. All right, here we go. Let's watch the battle between Johnson and Lachine. And there they go. And John, that's Lachine, number nine. And he slams into Johnson and runs him the hay bale. Our cameraman, Mark Leckel, almost got run over, but Lachine takes the whole shot after stuffing Johnson and goes out in front. Ron Lachine. It is wild out front. Lachine very smooth. Lots of pressure behind. Jeff Ward, number three, followed by Rick Johnson, number one, and Tyson Volan, number 22. So it is Ron Lachine in front on this one, opening up the lead now. Jeff Ward, his Kawasaki teammate in second, and Ricky Johnson. And Johnson has got to be burning David Stanfield. He's got to be absolutely, unbelievably upset at Ron Lachine at that tactic at the start. Very erratic riding by Johnson. You know he's upset. He's got to gather, get it together right now, or he's not going to have any chance at winning this race. Ricky Johnson, a very emotional young man, the top rider in the world today, according to Bob Hurricane Han, and he finds himself in the unaccustomed third place in this heat. And look at Johnson go for the air. Lachine in front and Johnson in third spot right behind Ward. There they go up the uphill. That's Lachine in front. Jeff Ward in second and right on his back tire is Ricky Johnson. Down the downhill and back onto the track. Number nine, Ron Lachine. Lachine in control. He won the second night at Pontiac this year. The only other rider besides Ricky Ryan to win other than Ward and uh, Johnson. So Lachine, one win this year in Supercross. He'd like to do it again tonight at the Coliseum. Ron Lachine, number nine, in front. Jeff Ward behind him, number three. And there is, in fourth spot, well, yes, there is Johnson, number uh, third spot, Johnson, number one. Johnson does not look good early in the race. He does not look smooth. Lachine looks awfully good out in front. He's not making any mistakes at all. Look at Lachine go for the air. Off that tabletop jump, there's Ward, number three and third, and there's number one, Johnson and fourth, and the crowd here is waiting for Johnson to make a move. But right now, it's Ron Lachine, number nine, Team Kawasaki of El Cajon, California. Good-looking young lad in front. Lachine about six foot tall, built like a football halfback. Ron Lachine, 20 years old, the 1985-125 national champion. All three of these guys, the three front runners, they are the bonus babies, the big bucks, man. They're Close to a million dollars in uh, just salaries alone these three guys command. Unbelievable. Uh, Lachine and Ward and Johnson, they are making in the mid six-figure bracket just in salaries from the factory. And you add on top of that David Stanfield endorsements, bonuses, and uh, it's unbelievable what these guys can pull in. A little trinket money for this race alone. Fastest heat race of the night. More likely it'll be this one. And if Lachine wins it, he's going to pick up an extra $1,000 tonight and $4,000 for the series. The top riders are burned out by age 25, 26, 27. They are out of racing, but they certainly can, can command top salaries, top income until then. And here is Johnson now getting serious. He is going after Ward at the Peristyle. The crowd is cheering Johnson on. They come out of the Peristyle and drop 80 feet to the floor of the Coliseum. Lachine in front. There's second, Ward number three, and there's Johnson number one and third. 
Ron Lachine out of El Cajon, California, a breeding ground for top motocrossers. Riders is like Brock Glover and Ricky Johnson, Lachine all coming out of the El Cajon area. And Lachine has got this race wrapped up if he can stay away and stay in front of these two riders, number three Ward and number one Johnson. Look at Larry, the lines they're taking now. Johnson pressuring Ward and Ward picking up the pace and sure enough, they're catching up to Lachine. The momentum of their battle, David Stanfield, is carrying them closer to Lachine. The crowd's cheering them on. There's Lachine, number nine, over past a lap rider through the whoops. And the white flag comes out and Johnson comes on. It's Lachine in front, look at human pogo sticks. Ward in second, number three, and here comes Ricky Johnson. These three top riders have all got videos out. Jeff Ward just released a video. Ward, he's winning ways, available at Kawasaki dealers. He tells you how to do this, but you got to have an awful lot of talent to be able to ride a motorcycle like these guys. Look at Johnson on the back tire of Ward, stalking him, looking for a mistake. Johnson does not like this in third position. He is the defending champion here. He's going to lose his number one plate to Ward, and out in front is his nemesis. Johnson does not like being in third. Ron Lachine in front, and he has let his displeasure with Johnson be known. He says, I don't like Ricky Johnson. I stuffed him in the hay bales. I know that's what he's going to say in the victory circle, because he did. He put him right in the hay bales. Now, Wardy trying to stay in front of Johnson, and Johnson's all over the track. Ronnie Lachine in front, the final lap. The checkered flag coming out. Here they go to Johnson right on Ward's back tire. Here's the finish. Oh, no hands. Here's Wardy. Looks behind him, and Johnson just waves at him, and they're both in midair. So Ron Lachine, a beautiful move at the start, although Johnson might dispute that. Lachine takes the victory. Ward is second. Ricky Johnson third, and Tyson Bolin. Tyson Bolin didn't even see him finishing in fourth spot. Let's go to David Stanfield on the field, and Ron Lachine. Oh, great. Uh, I think I just got the first cup championship, and uh, that's what I was really trying for real hard, and I was doing great. The pressure, the guys behind you, that's got to help. Yeah, they were coming, I can do they were there. I was trying to ride my own race and stay up. Gotta help. you got to feel good going in the main. Feel real good. Best thing about the start? Uh, yeah, I got a good start. Cut Johnson off there, felt real good. <laughs> okay, what do we look for in the main? Uh, hopefully the same start and uh, hopefully the win. Now there's another portion of the track where it is single file through and like Rick Johnson was essentially complaining to the head referee, hey, you can either get in front and block people, you can bump people. Another rider, a team rider can actually possibly hold him back if he doesn't get a good start. He doesn't like it. Yeah, one line through the whoops. I mean, what a joke. You got one line through those whoops, man. Everything's fine to that. That's sometimes you put it in really good. Stay with the clutch. When you lose it, get with it. Right, right. Just bring it around. Right. Keep it up. Right. And in the whoops, just hang tight. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. I know. I, I, I can know. go through there fast, but it's just, there's one line on the outside. If I come around, it doesn't matter how hard I hang on, whatever I do, there's no way possible to go around someone in the woods because all the other woods are, are like, they're brand new. There's it's only great. a couple, yeah, they're, they're perfectly square, and the other ones are gone. I mean, they're useless. They're totally useless. We're, Dave and I have been talking about it already on the radio. And I talked to him, I told him to get those guys going there with some shovels on a whoops, get out, come down. Not maybe they'll be usable. Right now what they're doing is the track designer Jim Kitchens talking to Roger DeCoster. They're talking about making the race more competitive. Two different lines through the whoop de doos Believe it or not, they come out of the tunnel, the dark, and they come shooting through the finish line here. Roger, it is not much of a race to follow the leader. Yeah, well, the, uh, it's the, the one line is so much easier than the rest of the line all across the track. The track is wide here, but you can only use about one foot of the width of the track. So what you have to do is try to develop a second line, but during practice, the, the, the initial, the best line, the easy line was not blocked off, so not, no other line developed. Okay, we've got one line. Why don't they just throw a hay bale in that one line? Well, they should have done that in practice, but once the race is started, it's too late to do that. I hate to say something like this, but you know Rick Johnson would have loved the second line through here. 
I'm sure he would, but and it could work. Yeah, it could work against him. The second heat, if he is, if he takes the start, if he has the lead in the start, it could be working against him because, you know, if it is a one-line track, it gives the the advantage to the guy who gets the whole shot. We all love to see a good race. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah, hopefully this will work. Thank you, Roger. The world of Supercross. There's number one Johnson coming up on the line. Next hit number seven Holland. Fifteen Guy Cooper looking down the line. David Stanfield of a, a tough lineup in this main event. The top two guns, they've been riding injured all year long. Rick Johnson with six Supercross victories and Jeff Ward with five. Ricky Ryan with one and Ron Machine with one. Johnson did far outside with poor position. He had to take the outside and here's the start. There's Ward, number three. Here comes Cooper. There goes Johnson. And Johnson is forced out. Johnson goes all the way to the outside. And here's the battle for the lead. Number 44, Fred Andrews of Ohio and 15, Cooper. And Johnson is trying to get back into the race. Holy Toledo, what an upset. The crowd on the edge of their seat here at the Coliseum. It is number 44, Fred Andrews in front. And there's number nine, Lachine, who was also in that, in that tangle. And Lachine will start out. He's back in 19th place. A tough break for Lachine and a tough break for Johnson. And suddenly it's anybody's ball game, David Stanfield. As out in front is Fred Andrews. In that first turn pileup, Dubach, Volan, Tishner, Lachine, Palos, and Ricky Johnson, and I believe Ronnie Tishner has broken his arm. And the question is, can Johnson or Lachine come back and even have a chance of winning this race? 20 laps through the mud, the blood, and the beer here at the LA Coliseum, and Johnson is starting in 17th spot. Jeff Ward in ninth right now. Ricky Johnson has moved up to 15th. Ronnie Lachine in 18th spot. There's your leaders. Now going off the peristyle and down 80 feet to the floor. Number 44, Fred Andrews, Salem, Ohio. He has never led a race this big, this prestigious. And 15 right behind him is Cooper. Then in third spot is 47, Manley. And it looked like Bowen coming up also. But here is your leader, Fred Andrews, and Cooper behind him. And Cooper is riding like Charlie Manson. Look at this guy all over the track. Cooper is a wild rider. He's not a teenager. He's 24 years old out of Stillwater, Oklahoma, and he's going around. No. Andrews slams the screen to a right in his face. Here's Johnson, and Johnson is moving up. He's up to about 14th now. Meanwhile, Andrews in front. That's Bowen in third. Here goes Cooper. He passes in midair, and Guy Cooper has taken the lead. Incredible. Guy Cooper, known for his aerial antic. Puts it to good use and takes over the lead. Guy Cooper, number 15, Stillwater, Oklahoma, and he flies back onto the Coliseum floor in the lead. 15, Guy Cooper in front, and nobody expected this. Andrews in second. There's six, Bowen in third, 47, Manley. And there's number five, Diamond, and he is in fifth spot. And Diamond, if you discount Bowen, who's not had a good year, Diamond is the only superstar in the top five. There's Wardy, and Wardy is back in mid-pack. Wardy is in eighth right now, but it looks like he's moving up, riding very fast. Jeff Ward is going to have to move up. Now, Johnson is way, way back. He started in in, uh, in 17th spot, actually, Johnson. And here's a pileup, and Diamond piles up there, and Lee's tries to go around, and Lee's goes into a hay bale. And Ward gets stuffed by Diamond. But Ward very wisely backs off and doesn't try to rush through Diamond. There's still plenty of racing left. And there's your leader, Guy Cooper with number 44, Andrews in second, and number six, Bowen in third. And here comes Wardy trying to make his way into the top five. Wardy's trying to pass Jeff Stanton, and Stanton's right in front of him, and here they go up the peristyle. Jeff Ward has his sights on Stanton. Jeff Stanton on a privateer factory support Yamaha ride. He's out of, uh, out of Michigan. A tough rider, and Wardy's trying to pull it, reel him in. And look at all the riders behind him. Paul and Reese Johnson, they're all back there. And this is the guy they're trying to catch. Number 15, privateer Guy Cooper of Stillwater, Oklahoma. 24 years old. This guy is wild. He's a crazy jumper, but right now he's leading the biggest race in the world. There comes Ward trying to move up. He is going around. It looks like he's got Stanton. Stanton goes right back in front of him. Now Ward goes in front. And Stanton shuts him up, shuts the door. A beautiful move by Stanton, David Stanfield. Stan is an outstanding rider, a 250, a 500 rider big. He's kind of like the next Rick Johnson, they say. 56, Jeff Stanton, but we're watching now. Number 15, Guy Cooper. Over the, the, the finish line jump, there's number 44 in second. That's still Fred Andrews, the Salem, Ohio rider on the private Honda. And meanwhile, it is still Jeff Ward trying to move up. There's he's trying to get around Stanton, and Stanton holds him off. There's Bowen, number six. 
and Manley is in fourth spot right behind Bowen. And there is Ricky Johnson coming out of nowhere. And Johnson has gone up to ninth from 17th. Unbelievable, unbelievable drive by Ricky Johnson. And there it is, Ward, Holland, and Lee. What a battle. And there's Brian Luna saying, you can. Now, that's Ricky Johnson's mechanic. He says, you can 16 laps. When he's, and he's telling Ricky Johnson, you can go for it. You have 16 laps to win. A lot of people don't feel here in the Coliseum that Johnson can win. There's Cooper, your leader. Over the jumps. There's the difference between first and second spot. There's Wardy back away, still trying to move up. But it is Guy Cooper, number 15 in front, 44. Fred Andrews in second. And look at that, Ricky Johnson's already moved up. He's made a couple of passes, and now he is, he's got a tight set on Jeff Ward. Johnson at this point is about in sixth spot, seventh, sixth or seventh spot. There's number 15, Cooper. He's in front and pulling away. The top riders in the world, and until this year, Ricky, uh, Ricky Ryan was the first privateer to win a Supercross in Daytona, and Guy Cooper might win it tonight in Los Angeles. Ward has passed Stanton. Now Johnson tries the outside and takes over Leesk. Ricky Johnson, what an incredible battle. He's come from 17th spot all the way up now to, I believe, about 5th or 6th. David, where do you have Johnson at this point? I have got Johnson in 6th, and uh, Ward now has passed Manley. There is Ward is Johnson. in 4th, and there comes Johnson moving up. And Johnson is going after Ward. Unbelievable. Whoa, what a race. Cooper in front, Andrews in second, Bowen still holding on to third here at the L.A. Coliseum. There's number 15, Cooper, in front. Excellent camera work by our crew. There's Wardy, and Ward, I believe, at this point, is about in fourth. Jeff Ward, 26 years old. Ripe old age at 26. He's been with Kawasaki 10 years. And there's Johnson behind him. So Ward is in fourth spot, Ricky Johnson in fifth, and here is a battle the crowd has waited to see. Holy Toledo. Cooper rips off a tear off as he goes over the finish line, tabletop jump. And look at the lead Cooper has. Here comes Johnson, the crowd getting behind him. They want him to pass Ward over the tabletop jump. Ward is in fourth and Johnson is in fifth. They're getting awfully close together, David Stanfield. We could see some tangling of handlebars real soon. They are bunching up on our third place rider. That is Keith Bowen. And remember, Fred Andrews, 44, still up there. They're in the peristyle. It's uh, Ward holding on in fourth spot. Johnson right next to him. Look out. Whoa. And they tangle handlebars. Look out. Johnson almost goes down. He tangles handlebars with Ward. And Ward is not somebody you can trifle with. He's strong. He's only about five foot six, but he's about as wide as a, as a piano in the shoulders. And you don't knock him down. Johnson trying to go around Ward, and Ward shut the door on him. Look at the drive RJ has on the back freeway. They're coming out of that mechanics turn. And then he loses a little bit over that kind of sand trap there into the S as he bobbles. Jeff Ward and Johnson tangled at the top of the peristyle. You could barely see it in the, in the darkness. And War, Johnson almost went down and recovered. And there goes Johnson. He's going around Ward. And he's got it. Unbelievable. Johnson has gone into four. And there is Lunas. He is trying to figure out where Johnson is in the track. He can hear the crowd cheering. And there he goes past Bowen. And Johnson is going to third. An unbelievable display of sheer determination. You crash, you're in 17th, you get up, and he's going from 17th to 3rd, and Johnson is trying to pass Andrews, going up the uphill. There's Cooper in front. He, Cooper does not know David Stanfield. What's going on behind him? He can hear the crowd. The crowd is going crazy. His wife on the pit board saying, go, go, go. And everywhere, Johnson is riding on the track. They are doing the wave, yelling for him. Oh, unbelievable. He is stalking number 44, Brent Andrews, for second spot. There is Luna still, still watching Johnson. He can't believe this. There's your second place rider, number 44, a privateer. And there's number one, Johnson, the hottest rider in the world. And he's going to go around Andrews. He's going to try. He's got him. Andrews, Andrews just, just backed off. And now he's trying to go back after Johnson. And Bowen is right behind Andrews. And now Johnson has gone from 17th to second. And he's going after Guy Cooper. David Stanfield, I don't believe this race. A possibly an insurmountable lead. Guy Cooper is so far out in front. But the problem with Guy Cooper, as with Ricky Johnson, they're approaching slower traffic. Ricky Johnson has gone from 17th to 2nd, going through lap riders like Sherman through Georgia. Look at the, the corner workers in the crowd on the field getting behind Johnson. They want him to win. Unbelievable. Johnson. Luna's probably telling the other mechanic, David, to tell the slower Honda riders to get over and let Johnson come by. 
Guy Cooper on the front stretch. We are less than halfway through this race, and there's RJ. And RJ is making his move. Actually, a little past halfway at this point, but it is Johnson's Johnson's ball game now. He's got to catch Cooper, but he's he's in control and gaining on the Stillwater Oklahoma native. There's Cooper. And Johnson is back. Lap riders around him, both sides. That's when it can be dangerous. When a rider does not know you're coming up to pass him and moves over in front of you and down you go. According to my stopwatch, less than three seconds a lap. Ricky Johnson is gaining on uh, Guy Cooper less than three seconds a lap, which means by lap number, uh, the last lap, possibly he could be within striking distance. Unbelievable. If Johnson pulls this off, it will be the most incredible comeback I've ever seen in, in 17 years of calling Supercross. Jeff Ward moving into third. That's right. Ward has gone into third, and now it is, it is Cooper, then Johnson, then Ward. And we could see a battle between Ward and Johnson toward the later stages of this race. Ricky Johnson, the crowd, the crowd here at the Coliseum watching this young man from El Cajon. There is Cooper. There's Cooper. And we should see Johnson behind him. And that's, you just saw a, a, a look at Johnson's helmet. There's Johnson going over the finish line jump now. Guy Cooper, the ride of his life. Obviously the most exciting race in his entire career. No question about that. He is doing an admirable job. We've been talking about Johnson. Cooper deserves all the accolades tonight. If he can hold off Johnson, it will be a miracle. But Cooper is doing an incredible job of fighting and scratching and clawing to stay in front. Here's Johnson on the downhill. Oh, and the Honda mechanics are waving on Ricky. There went Cooper, and there goes Johnson. That's how close they are, David Stanfield. He can reel him in now. He can pinpoint him. He can actually see him. Earlier, he was on the other side of the track. Ricky Johnson, he is burning to win this race. The defending champion's going to lose his place. He wants to go out in a in glory. In a blaze of glory. There is Cooper in front, and Johnson smells blood. He sees the young Oklahomian in front of him, and he is going after him. Over the finish line jump. Guy Cooper, number 15, he's your leader. A surprise, he's led almost the entire race here at the Coliseum on a warm summer evening. And there's Johnson, number one, in second. And Johnson is going after Cooper, and there they are. That's Cooper in front, and Johnson behind him as he goes up the uphill. What a battle. Johnson is stalking him all over the track. Look at this, a, a bike link in front, and Johnson is looking for a place to pass. Cooper is riding over his head, David Stanfield. He is taking chances. He's got to to stay in front of Johnson. This is incredible. RJ is going to try every trick in the book, and watch this. The crowd is going absolutely insane. Unbelievable. Johnson has gone from 17th to 2nd, and he is one bike length away from taking the victory. He's got him. Johnson, no! Cooper takes it back! Johnson trying to go around the outside, and Cooper said, no, you're not going by. You will not pass, and he slammed the door in Johnson's face, and Johnson is back. He wants Cooper. RJ got a wheel in, Cooper said no way, shut the door. Unbelievable, unbelievable racing action, the crowd going crazy, Johnson now trying it again, Johnson's got him, Johnson has got Cooper. Now, incredible drive coming out of the woods, RJ, his weight over the back rear tire, incredible floating sensation over the bump, and he just had the drive over the jump. I have never seen a race like this, you've got a rider who crashed in the first lap, he started 17th out of 21 riders, and he has taken the lead, and the crowd can't believe it, but Cooper, he's like a, a, a bumblebee who's gone crazy, he keeps staying close to Johnson, and makes Johnson's life miserable, Johnson's saying you're not supposed to do this, if I pass you, back off. The sign from, did you see that sign from Lunas? Less than two laps to go, zero lead, meaning no seconds. You've got Guy Cooper right on your tail. No mistakes for Johnson, but let me tell you, he's had to pass 16 guys, and he has got mud on his goggles. He's, he doesn't have clear vision. That could be a problem in the last few moments. Johnson looks a little wobbly here, and also he's probably incredibly tired. He's in good physical shape. There's Lachine way back, who was never a factor in the main event. I believe Ronnie Lachine has now moved up to 11th spot, which is admirable. White flag. The white flag comes out, and Johnson's got a lap. If he can hold on for one more lap, David Stanfield, he's got the victory. And Cooper is determined to try to pull off the upset of the century. Look at this. Unbelievable. No mistakes. They're concentrating on no mistakes right now. They can't make a mistake. If Johnson makes a mistake, Cooper will take him. This is the final lap. The final few turns, can Johnson do it? Can he come, I don't think anybody has ever come from 17. He is having problems with his goggles. You can, you can see him paw at the tear-off. 
he's having problems. Vision problems. He got roosted a couple times, and he's got rocks and dirt on his go There it goes again, yeah. and he is bobbling. That slowed him up quite a bit. Here comes Cooper. Cooper is closing the gap every time Johnson tries to clear off his tear -off. He's been eating roost for all the, the whole lap for like 17, 18, well, 19 laps now. He's been taking dirt in his face, and he's trying to hold on to this lead, and Cooper is stalking him. 100 yards to go. Unbelievable. The final lap, and Johnson, and Johnson goes down. He goes down. Johnson gets up again. The crowd goes crazy. Cooper is on him like a dog on a piece of meat. The checkered flag comes out, and Ricky Johnson wins the Super Bowl of Autocross. Holy Toledo. Guy Cooper, oh. incredible finish as well. Look at Johnson turns around and shakes his hand and holds it up and says, you won this one too, buddy. Johnson wins it. Cooper is second. Unbelievable. Ricky Johnson takes home the victory. Guy Cooper, a well-deserved second. Jeff Ward manages third and Jeff Lee's fourth. Let's go down to the field and David Stanfield and an elated Ricky Johnson. That must have been the longest race of your life. No, it was probably one of the best. Uh, I got hit really hard the first turn. I just, I looked out, I looked back to see who waffled me, and it was two Kawasaki's, and those are the guys that I was worrying about, you know, having to go catch them. Jeff got off before me, but Roddy didn't, Roddy didn't have a chance. So I just kept plugging away and plugging away. I wasn't worried about what place I was. I just wanted to charge the whole race, you know, and it worked out. What was Looney telling you on the pit board? He was just telling me to charge, mainly to just keep going, keep pushing, keep pushing, because sometimes when you get a gap in between guys, you're sort of lackadaisical. He told me I was in second and how far Cooper was. And I was right. I felt really good when I saw minus eight, eight laps. It felt great, man. I mean, the crowd here is the best. I mean, I, well, they saw a good race. You know, it's not usually you see someone come from last in a pileup and win. So I can't wait to watch it on videotape. Guy, incredible, great. I mean, what what's the feeling? Uh, it's so great. I'm, I'm so happy. Second is the best I've ever done at Supercross. I wanted to win so bad, but uh, we're, we're talking. You know, a heat win is fine, but coming in the top three in a Supercross race, especially the granddaddy of them all, it's got to be great. Okay. What was it like? You didn't get the whole shot, though. No, I didn't get the whole shot, but Fred Andrews is a good friend of mine, and I was hoping that I could get around him without any problems, and I did on the second lap. Jana did a real good job on the pit board, telling me where I was at and how many seconds I had, and she told me I had a 10-second lead at one time, and then it went to eight, and then it went to six, and I knew it had to be Johnson Award. It had to be one of those two guys pulling me in. I take it as good as a win. Oh, I, it is. I'm, I'm really happy. Mm -hmm.